Hi everyone, Billy Grannis. I'm on the business development team at the Stellar Development Foundation. Stellar Development Foundation is the nonprofit organization that shepherds, that supports the Stellar blockchain decentralized network. Stellar has been around um, since 2014. It predates Ethereum, actually. Uh, and it was built from the beginning uh, for the movement of value, movement of real world assets. So uh, stable coins were on Stellar before the term stable coin even existed. Um, and uh, since then we've grown to be, or the network has grown to be one of the largest, uh, or chains with the largest balance of real world assets. Now we're neck and neck with Ethereum there. <laughs> So just some quick stats, um, of, I was just talking about this 430 million plus uh, tokenized market cap. That doesn't include stable coins. Uh, this does include uh, Benji from Franklin Templeton, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, which is uh, the largest or maybe a close second now to BlackRock's uh, tokenized fund. Uh, and then uh, relevant assets, we have 1.3 billion in transaction volume. For us, relevant assets are assets that are tied to real world value. So there's actually much more uh, volume on Stellar Network, but as a foundation, we like to track what we call relevant or meaningful uh, real world transactions. And 92 million payments processed on the network as of Q4 2023. So as I said, Stellar was built for tokenization. Um, I think the top row here, uh, speed, low cost scalability, at this point those are table stakes. You need this to be a, a chain or network that supports real world assets. But where we really stand out is in the second and third layer, which is the consensus protocol, which is unique. It's not proof of work or proof of stake. Uh, and actually. Uh, relies upon a quorum set of uh, trusted entities or identity or entities that um, identify themselves and choose the other entities that they like to trust. Uh, and from the start, the foundation has built the Stellar network with compliance tools built in. So if we're going to work with real world assets and have a network that works with traditional financial institutions, you need to have compliance tools, the ability for KYC. Um, you know, whitelists, allow lists, uh, prevent certain people from holding assets. That's all native to the chain. Um, and then interoperability. So interoperability means interoperability between Stellar and other networks, but also between Stellar, blockchain, and traditional financial institutions. Um, Bon row, I'll just talk quickly about smart contracts. So we uh, launched Sorb on smart contracts in February. We predated Ethereum, so we didn't have smart contracts from the start. Um, but ultimately, uh, after uh, many years, went went the smart contract route, and so we have a lot of the great Stellar classic features now combined with a fully complete network that you can do anything you want on, just like Ethereum. I'm going to skip this. Um, so natively, Stellar has some core, what we call asset flags, um, that essentially control how your asset can be used. So the Stellar network is a public open blockchain. Uh, anybody can join. But if you are the issuer of an asset, you control how that asset will be used, which is very important for uh, banks and, 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 and licensed financial institutions who need to know, make sure that their assets are be, being used legally and not for illicit purposes. Uh, so you have the ability to approve users, as I mentioned, freeze assets, claw back assets, and then now with smart contracts, you have the ability to program anything into uh, the asset. We work very closely with partners. One sitting here is Cheesecake Labs. Uh, Cheesecake, in partnership with us, their development shop focused on blockchain, very close to Stellar. Um, they launched the Stellar Asset Sandbox, which is basically a place where anybody can go publicly accessible online to launch, issue their own asset on testnet, uh, test out all of these features, and, and begin their Stellar journey before they actually do launch uh, real world assets that are backed by real value. Thank <laughs> you.
Uh, one of the things that really makes Stellar stand out is uh, the focus on on and off ramps. So we want wherever you are in the world, you have the ability to go in between fiat or traditional um, money and get easily in and out of crypto. Uh, and so you see here, this isn't even uh, every anchor on the network, as we call them, are on and off ramp. Uh, but this is just uh, a bunch where, depending on where you are, you have the ability to go into an asset or go in with, with your fiat, get a digital asset, or have a digital asset sent to you, and then you can withdraw it either as cash uh, or with local banking rails via these partners. So this here is what we talk about when we talk about interoperability with the real world and Stellar Network. It's through these institutions that enable uh, that bridge between digital and traditional. And here's just a broader view of um, many of the companies in the Stellar ecosystem that are building. Uh, you may see uh, your name here. And here are some builders. Now, as a foundation, um, we don't control the network. It's a public blockchain, but we are funded to support the network. So we offer support for um, tech support, dev support, either internally with our experts or with some of our partners. Um, we have marketing and uh, we have a full marketing team that can go out and co-market opportunities with you. Um, and we even have a very generous uh, financing grant and investment program where if you're looking to bootstrap your project or launch, uh, we can help you do that with uh, our funds. And as I mentioned, we just launched our Sorbon smart contracts. These are Rust slash Wasm base. Um, but now it makes the network basically pro programmable. You can build whatever you want. I want to touch on maybe one or two case studies before I wrap up. Uh, the first is MoneyGram. So I mentioned we have this network of on and off ramps where you can go in and out um, of fiat and digital assets. Well, MoneyGram partnership basically says anywhere in the world where there's a MoneyGram location, you can send USDC and withdraw with local fiat or do the reverse. Um, send in local or deposit local fiat at a MoneyGram location and have USDC sent to you. So whether that's a saving use case or you're traveling or a remittance use case, um, you have the ability to go in and out of USDC, US dollar stablecoin, and whatever the local fiat currency is. And there's 400,000 MoneyGram locations, so that's a pretty large opportunity for, for doing this. Uh, the next I'll talk about is Franklin Templeton. This is one of the, uh, or if not the largest, uh, on-chain um, real-world asset money market funds. Uh, so Franklin Templeton has issued what's called Benji. Um, Benji is a dollar-pegged uh, token that is backed by... Uh, government debt and treasuries. Uh, the cool thing about Benji is it's it's pegged to a dollar, so it can actually, in theory, be used like a stable coin. And then interest is airdropped to you as new tokens. Now, what blockchain offers for this use case is daily interest payments, which isn't possible in the traditional, uh, the traditional way. Um, and for Franklin Templeton, uh, cost savings because they're actually using the Stellar Ledger for settlement of these assets. There's no secondary ledger they're using, um, but also opens up potential new use cases for the user. So V1 launched, you can sign up for Benji using their app uh, and, and buy the token. And since that, uh, which you had to do all within the app, they just announced, uh, Franklin Templeton just announced peer-to-peer -peer payments. So now you can actually send uh, this Benji token to other users uh, that are on the platform. And then the V3, I think the, the broader goal is that you essentially can use this interest-bearing Benji token from Franklin Templeton for uh, payments, uh, whether it be a retailer or paying, paying your friend. And this is just a, a view of what the app looks like today. Uh, the, the last case study I want to talk to before I wrap up is Wisdom Tree, which has done something similar to uh, Franklin Templeton and Benji, but the difference is they've launched, uh, I believe, over 10 funds. So that's a gold-backed fund, uh, a money market treasury fund, an S&P 500 ETF. Um, and so they're larging, launching you know, a whole portfolio of 
uh, digital assets natively on Stellar, using Stellar as the record of truth. Um, and they're, they, they recently launched, I think in most states, I don't know if they're allowed to sell in all states yet, uh, but they're quickly growing this and, and plan to continue to expand their issuances on Stellar. Oh, one more uh, awesome use case is uh, what we as a foundation have done on Stellar with um, UNHCR through our aid and disbursement platform. So we created uh, at the onset of the war in Ukraine a disbursement platform called the Stellar Disbursement Platform. Uh, the idea is that an aid organization can use this platform uh, with stable coins to directly send funds to refugees or displaced persons, which UNHCR did in Ukraine. So through the platform, they are able to ping uh, recipients via their cell phone to download a wallet. Uh, so displaced persons in Ukraine were getting a text message, download this wallet. Once they download the wallet, USDC would be sent to them immediately. Uh, and then they can go to a MoneyGram location wherever they are and withdraw that USDC as cash. Um, I think to date, over 2 million has been distributed uh, via this program, and we're looking to expand it to other regions beyond Ukraine. And that's it. Um, so happy to chat if you have any questions or uh, you know, think Stellar is, is right for you, and I'll stay after for some questions. Thank you so much.